Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Angel Miners and the Lightning Riders by AWOL Nation. My name is Corey Schmidt and welcome to Stereo Space. Alright, we are back with another album review and this time we're doing the latest album from multi-instrumentalist and songwriter Aaron Bruno, who is the mastermind of the band A1 Nation. And this band actually became popular in the 2000s for their first hit single, which was called Sail, which was certified diamond. Um, and I'm sure everybody's heard this song because uh, it's so popular that it actually holds the record for the most amount of weeks spent on the Billboard Hot 100 uh, for an independent artist. And it's actually the second most for any artist, which is not a simple feat, so that's really awesome that, that they were able to pull it off. And um, uh, they've actually been able to maintain that amount of hype on all of their releases. They've had multiple singles with very substantial radio play for all of their albums to date, which is incredible that they were able to do that as a band. And, and this album was no different. It was led by the singles The Best, California Halo Blue, and Pacific Coast Highway in the Movies, which is a lot of long words, but it's okay. And I'm just going to get right into it. This is my favorite A1 Nation album of their entire catalog. It is a masterful blend of their signature style. They really seem to have honed in on what makes A1 Nation unique and what makes them so good. It's that blend of, of, of extremes, if you will. It's sort of like they have a mix of the guitar and the synth. They have a mix of quiet, intimate vocals and loud screaming and you know mixes of, of no percussion at all and then you know like thrash metal drums and they're just able to culminate it all together into just a perfect harmony of extremes and that's how I would describe A1 Nation's sound and they they mastered it on this album and, and I like every single song on the album because they're able to to pull off that style each each time and the album just has a perfect selection of radio friendly hit singles that you know could play on the radio and it'd be great party songs and stuff like that but they also have uh, just as many songs uh, that are a little bit more emotional and maybe a little bit more experimental just to really just you know just complete the album and make it suitable for any type of listener so for the last album review I went through every single song because there was only eight of them but this one there's a couple more so I think I'm not gonna go through every one plus a lot of them uh, like all the radio singles are all pretty similar so I feel like I'd be repeating myself so I don't think I need to go through each one but I'm just gonna go through the ones that I think stood out the most to me Alright, so I'm going to start with the first song on the album, which is called The Best. And this is just sort of a classic A1 Nation song about just sort of being who you want to be and, and being the best you that you can be. And uh, this is like a perfect example of the A1 Nation style. It's the same style that you can find on sale and almost all of their other hits. Uh, it's basically just, you know, like very simple, quiet, well not exactly quiet, but you know, like regular volume level. Um, verses with very slow lyrics and stuff like that and then it just bursts into a super loud uh, fast crazy uh, chorus and that's something that they were able to pull off uh, on every single album. Um, Sale is a little bit different because the chorus doesn't have a lot of lyrics it's mostly instrumental but this song instead of the instruments they focus more on the vocals in the chorus but overall the moods are the same going from sort of like normal mainstream radio song to boom loud in your face like make you want to dance kind of style and that's something that a Nation pulls off all the time so this song uh, Lightning Riders, Pacific Coast Highway in the movies uh, and California Halo Blue are kind of their like radio friendly songs so I don't think I need to really talk about all of them uh, they're all pretty similar but I mean at the same time there's nothing wrong with them and if they played on the radio I wouldn't change the station and I, I would still listen to them alright so the next song I'm going to talk about is called Slam Angel Miners it's it really perfects that the style of I guess like the bass drop or whatever of an electronic song and that style is one of my favorites because it's very very simple which means it's hard to pull off but um, it's basically just you know they build it up build it up and then just someone says like a word or a short phrase or something and then it just cuts into no like crash symbols or anything like that it just goes to like a really simple electronic riff with like some bass layering in the background and then just like a really simple drum beat And 
it just really like makes you pay attention because it builds up for so long and you expect like this crazy mashup of all these different sounds but it's only about three sounds just kind of working together in a perfect harmony and it's really really cool because it really catches your attention um, and that's something that I really like when songs do that because not a lot of songs do that most of them are, are really big you know bass drops but when it's something very simple like that I think it's really cool that bands are able to pull it off and it definitely makes you it definitely catches your ear and makes you notice it and they don't just go back and forth from building to the simple riff in the whole song they actually sort of build on it as the song goes on making it so the song actually goes somewhere which is cool so you know like the second and the third time that they have that that simple riff they add you know like background vocals and some like synths in the background and orchestral parts as well and it it just adds to the song and makes it not boring and it actually makes you excited to get through the whole song you know because it's actually like, oh, this is different than the beginning of the song, which is really exciting. And it shows that he's that Aaron Bruno is creative enough to be able to take something that works and build off of that and not just stick with it for 3 minutes and 30 seconds or however long the song is. But I'm really glad that he was able to build off of it and make it even better than just the bass line stuff. Bass line as in the basic thing, not as in bass guitar. Alright, so I'm skipping ahead a little bit now, but the next song I want to talk about is Radical. Um, and this song is a really, really cool way to just sort of kickstart things, because the last two songs before that I'm not going to talk about, but whatever, are a little bit slower, and this is a great way to just sort of kick back into it. And just the song on its own is really, really cool. Um, the chorus is really neat. Uh, the riff that they use is sort of sounds like it's like going backwards and then forwards, sort of like a jellyfish, like going in and out and in and out, which is really, really cool. And it's, it's something that really catches your attention as well. And then they actually, right after the chorus, have a moment of the post-chorus, which is just drums and vocals. And it just sort of makes you notice when they're not there and it makes you actually look out for them in the next chorus. So that's just another instance of, I think, uh, Bruno being very, very smart when he's assembling his songs and the way that he's able to, to accent certain things and, or accentuate certain things and make certain things more clear and then take things away to make you notice them the next time and stuff like that. And it's really, really cool and it makes it an awesome song. All right, the next one is Battered Black and Blue and then in parentheses, Hole in My Heart. Uh, this one is also really awesome. It's, it's one of my favorites right now. Uh, like, if I had to choose a song right now that I would listen to off this album over and over again, it would be this one. Because it's another example of the perfect mix of really heavy, angry moments. And then really intimate, introspective, simple moments with the vocals. just going back and forth and back and forth and it's really really cool. I sort of have like an image in my head for this song as well of some someone that's sort of like introverted and reserved who just sort of like goes off and can't take it anymore and just starts screaming and just got like the heavy synths in the background and then it cuts to like the quiet introspective moment and then he's sort of like going back to their reserved quiet place just saying like you know like this is I'm going back to where I was sorry about that like I don't know what happened, sorry about that outburst. And then they just jump back into it and does it again. And it's just really cool to sort of like have that narrative in your head of someone who's just like just trying to be quiet but is just like so fed up with everything that they just like can't take it anymore and they just, you know, attack, if that makes sense. And that's something that's really cool. And that sort of seems like the that's sort of the image of this album as well, where they're just sort of someone who, who seems like they're generally not a super loud, crazy person that just sort of gets fed up with their world and just has to has to speak up against it, basically. And uh, this is a song that is like that, and it seems like that seems to be the case on the whole album as well. Alright, so the next song is the second to last one on the album. It's called Half Italian. Uh, and I skipped one song, which is the one before it. And that song is a little bit slower, and it's a lot more like regular radio friendly. But when I start to hear this song, it, I'm so excited because after this sort of slow, regular song, it jumps back into like a bam, 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 bam. And I'm like, yes, I'm so ready for the angry screaming. Bring it in. Um, and it's really, really cool just to sort of bring the listener back after that quiet moment. Um, and that's something that it sets up really well. And that's why it's a really cool song, even just from the first couple seconds.
And this song really focuses on the verses more than the chorus. Uh, the verses are just like simple piano quarter notes with really simple drums in the background. And then just very straining, almost screaming vocals by Bruno, uh, just talking about what he's saying. He says, like, you know, uh, like, I'm sorry, man, I'm half Italian, I hope you understand, stuff like that. Um, and it's really cool. It's, it's almost like him saying, like, sorry that I've been acting out so much, but I hope you understand this is how I am, stuff like that which is really cool, and, it's, and there's not a lot going on in the song, but uh, that kind of thing I think is really, really neat. Alright, so we've made it to the last song, which is called I'm a Wreck, and this is basically the way that AWOL Nation seems to enjoy ending their albums. Uh, it's basically the same for the last album, and the last song on that album was called Stop That Train, and it was basically the same thing where it starts with like a very simple, uh, like, uh, again, the same like style. There seems to be like two styles for A1 Nation. Either like the simple, radio-friendly, sometimes intimate vocals, and then like the super angry, heavy, hard rock with the screaming. Um, like A and B, basically. So it starts with style A, where it's just a little bit quieter and more like radio-friendly, that kind of thing. Um, and it just sort of has a moment where it stops, and then it just jumps into the angry style B sort of stuff. That's what they did on the last album, and this song is very similar. And both albums are ending with this type of song. And in the chorus he says, uh, Run, run, I'm a reckless wrecking ball. Oh my, what the heck. Don't worry, it's nothing personal, sometimes I'm a wreck. And it sort of seems like he's just having this moment where he's saying like, I apologize for my outbursts, quote unquote, during this album. Sometimes, you know, I just get a little emotional. Sometimes I'm, in a, I'm a wreck, basically, is what he's saying. Um, and I think that's really cool. It's sort of like, as a listener, you sort of feel connected to the singer a little bit more because of that. Um, and it's like, it's a very unique thing too, like I can't think of any album where it's like, oh yeah, sorry I got, did some hard rock there, I guess I'm just a wreck sometimes. So that's kind of cool that he did that. Um, and it's a, it's a cool way to end the album as well. But then the song actually isn't over yet, and it jumps into like the super heavy stuff, like the style B thing I was talking about. And it sort of feels like Bruno is telling us like, don't worry, you know I'm apologizing just because I have to as a radio artist. I still love doing the hard rock stuff, and I'm not going to stop doing that. So all you fans of hard rock, don't worry, I'm going to keep doing that. And again, I have no idea if that was his intentions, but that's just what I got from it, and overall it's a perfect way to end the, end the album. Alright, so that is the entire album, and it's just a really, really good album. Um, he's really mastered like the, the, his classic style as well. The only thing I sort of didn't like about it is just the lyrics in a lot of the songs, and this is the case for a lot of Alien Nation songs, where it's just, it's really hard to connect with the lyrics as, from an emotional standpoint, So a lot of the times they're not very realistic, and it's really hard to understand like what he's talking about in like a real world sense. Uh, like for example, in one of the songs, I think it's from Lightning Riders, he says, I'm just gonna burn, no, I'm just gonna board up these bridges, now I'm glow in the dark. And it's like, that's really cool, but like, what are you saying? Like, what does that mean? And there's no way for me to really like relate that to my life, because I've never been glow in the dark, and I haven't boarded up any bridges. And like, I know how metaphors work, and I know that he's not literally saying that, but like, just as a listener, it's hard to be like, oh, dude, that's really cool. I can totally relate that to something that happened in my life. It's really hard to do that with, with lyrics that are so metaphorical and stuff like that. And I know, like, as a writer, it's, it's more fun and it's, it's, it's easier, it's more organic, sort of, to just sort of write about your own experiences and you can write lyrics that make sense to you. Um, and I know I do that, like sometimes I'll write lyrics for things that happen in my life and people will be like, I don't get this. And it's like, well yeah, that's because that had, didn't happen to you. Um, I know that's how it works as a writer of lyrics, but just as a listener, it's sort of hard to connect with stuff when you have no idea what they're actually talking about. Um, like for example, like a car seat headrest song, which is my favorite band, um, it's super easy to know exactly what he's talking about because he lays it out perfectly. He's like, this is what happened. I got drunk on Friday and I saw my dad in a hallucination. And it's like, okay, I know exactly what he's talking about. 
Um, and then he presents the emotions as well, and that's the part you connect with. And I know that that's hard to do because you have to be really, really good at writing lyrics, literally, in, in like in a literal sense. It's it's hard to write lyrics realistically. But just for Animal Nation songs, since they're so metaphorical and vague, it's really hard to connect emotionally because you're like, I'm not really sure what he's talking about. But overall, the instruments really do uh, bring out the best in his music. Like I'm not like, oh my gosh, I totally relate to these lyrics. I more so go, oh my gosh, the way that he blends the guitars and the synths together work so well and I love this song. So yeah, that, that's just the little thing that I don't like as much about his music, but overall the instruments and the background stuff and everything besides the vocals, or besides the lyrics, the vocals themselves are even really good, but besides the words that he's saying, uh, all of the other stuff really just builds up the songs and make them so great, and that's why I still love them. And so I think overall I'm going to give this album like a 9.5 out of 10. You almost had me out of 10, but not quite. Um, with my only comments just being, please sometimes have some literal lyrics. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much all I got to say. If you have any other albums you want me to review in the future, uh, let me know in the comments, as well as um, any bands you want me to talk about for my Check It Out series. So yeah, you can just let me know in the comments, or if you know me in real life, you can just message me or come to my front door. But don't do that if I don't know you in real life, because that would be very strange. Uh, so please don't. So yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say about this album. Thank you guys very much for watching Stereospace.